It's somehow fitting here in Washington where the city was essentially shut down by a grand total of four inches of snow. Those big forecasts about the monster storm, at least for the District of Columbia, turn out to be fake news. So everybody is staying home except the media and political people who kind of have to be there because this is what we do. And it's fitting because everybody's snowing each other now in this debate about Obamacare and the CEO and the Trump White House. Uh, it seems to be a debate in which everybody is trying to discredit everybody else. And this is what we do for entertainment, I guess, when it's snowing, folks, when the kids are home from school and all of that. So, you know, you had a big setback for the administration with the Congressional Budget Office coming out with that report scoring, as it's known here inside the Beltway, saying that just by next year, 14 million people would be off the insurance rolls if this bill uh, that Paul Ryan and Donald Trump and the GOP are pushing were to take effect. Uh, and it turns out, obviously, the government would also save a lot of money because uh, they wouldn't be spending, the, the taxpayers at least, wouldn't be spending as much on these federal subsidies. There would be tax credits, which wouldn't be as generous and all of that. So naturally, uh, the administration doesn't like these numbers. And so you're getting a lot of questions about the credibility of the CBO. Well, they've been wrong before. Well, they don't have a very good track record. The CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, is a nonpartisan agency. And in this case, the head of the CBO, a guy named Keith Hall, is a former Bush administration economist who was appointed by the GOP leaders in Congress. So it's a little strange to see this back and forth. Now, you cannot, doesn't mean CBO is always right in every particular, but it is trying to make a good faith estimate about what would be the impact of this bill. And of course, you have Democrats uh, doing their own snow job saying, you know, thousands of people will die if this bill is passed. And President Trump isn't keeping his promises because he said everybody would be covered, which in turn has drawn a rejoinder uh, from Sean Spicer and others. Uh, Spicer, by the way, getting hammered for about a half an hour with questions about the health care bill and CBO and all of that by the White House press corps. Uh, they say, well, it's not really fair to say X millions of people would lose insurance because some of them, many of them, we can argue about that, will opt not to have insurance because we're getting rid of the mandate right now. Uh, if you, uh, you basically pay a big penalty if you don't buy insurance. Trump administration would throw that out. Some people would opt uh, not to have insurance. Therefore, the administration argues uh, you know, that this is freedom of choice. So with all of this back and forth, the real political question is, can Donald Trump dealmaker actually sell this and get it through Congress? Because in some ways, the CBO is giving a kind of a boost to people who believe that the bill doesn't go far enough, that the tax credits aren't generous enough, that too many people would in fact lose insurance, uh, particularly older people who would be hit with the biggest premium hikes, according to several analyses of the way this works. If you're 20, it's great. If you're 55, maybe not so great. At the same time, the most conservative wing in the House doesn't like this bill at all, it's threatening not to vote for it, says it goes too far, it keeps too many aspects of uh, Obamacare, uh, it's too much of a government role in health care. They thought this is what they campaigned against. So uh, as we uh, try to get the city back to normal, uh, there's a very icy fight going on, and I think the outcome of it is not only going to have a huge effect on the health care system and, will, and, and, and whether how people get insurance who have trouble affording it, but really on the Trump presidency, because this is the first big battle of his presidency. And if he can't get a Republican Congress to push something workable through, um, then that is going to be a setback. And that's no snow job.